G'day. My name's Nathan Linzel, and welcome to episode number 64 of The Fine Art of Distraction. So, on today's episode, I've actually decided to do another rock mandala painting, but before I get onto too much on what I'm actually going to be doing, I have to show you the dry result of last week because it turned out insanely awesome! How cool are these things? <laughs> now, it's actually quite big, so I'm going to have to show it in sections. <laughs> Alrighty, so... This is the first panel. How cool is that? All right, so that's the first panel. So it was actually a triptych, um, um, what's it called? Dutch pour. This is the center piece. I just love the movement so much in this thing. It's so cool. Right, so that was the center. And this is the other edge. So this was actually my entry for um, Nate's Art Lab, which basically Nate's Art Lab is a Patreon's um, group where basically each month Nate sets forward a challenge and um, last month's challenge was negative space. And as a lot of you guys know, I actually wasn't a fan of negative space and I said it in quite a few of my videos. Until I did this. I'm actually a pretty big fan of negative space now. <laughs> so Nate, you rock. Thanks, man. Phew! <laughs> yeah, so um, when Nate set forward the challenge, I was like pretty scared about it because I didn't like negative space. So I thought, I'm going to go huge. I'm ab absolutely going to go as big as I can go. <laughs> so I actually made these panels. They're actually um, MDF board, and basically it is a meter 20 that way by 40 centimeters. Um, and for those in America, I think it's like 48 inches by 16 inches. I'm pretty sure off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, so um, it's my first proper um, triptych um, painting where basically, um, the painting actually goes across all three um, canvases, or in this in this instance, wooden panels, um, and it actually flows across all three. So I'm actually really happy with it. Um, I've had so many amazing comments about it, and yeah, I'm I'm super happy with it. So you. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's actually talk about today's um, episode. So as I said at the start, I'm going to be doing another mandala um, dot painting and I'm basically going to be doing it on a little rock. So it's a big difference between <laughs> these things and this um, because this is only um, five and a half inches <laughs> compared to like basically 48 by 48 inches if you were to marry it all up. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm going to be doing, um, I'm going to coat this in black first and then basically put hundreds of dots all over it to, to sort of make it pretty. <laughs> now, I don't know what sort of pattern I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to sort of let it flow as I go. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so now that I've told you what I'm going to be doing today and I showed you the dry results of last week, let's head over to the table and I'll show you what products I'm going to be using and then yeah, let's get into it. Thanks guys. 
Alrighty then, so here's all the products we're going to be using today, and as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing a mandala dot painting on a rock. So, of course, we need a rock. <laughs> now, I actually made this rock myself. Um, now, you don't necessarily need to make your own. You can buy round rocks, um, or you, if you're lucky enough, you can find round rocks in nature. But I wanted to make my own, so I got this round stone silicon mold from the Happy Dotting Company and made my own rock. <laughs> um, some other products that I'm going to be using from the Happy Dotting Company are actually these dotting tools. Now they start from 0.5 of a mil and go all the way up to 15.5 mil, okay? There is two other tools in there. There's a stylus, which I will be using in this um, painting. And I'm not too sure what the name of this one is, but I won't be using this one, okay? Um, these cotton wool buds aren't to, to clean my ears. <laughs> they're actually um, to fix any mistakes that I do. Now, they're not your normal sort of cotton wool bud. They're actually a very dense um, cotton and it's actually a pointed end. So they're actually really, really good to actually um, clean up mistakes with. Um, another product that you will need is a flexible ruler. Um, a flexible ruler is much easier than using just a standard ruler that only has a little bit of a flex to it. Um, you will also need something sharp to get rid of this center point little divot just there. I'll explain that a little bit later. You will also need a paintbrush to give the um, stone a coating and the paint that I'm going to be using to give the coating is um, an exterior house paint which is British Paints Four Seasons Defense Exterior Low Sheen in Black. Now the first rock that I painted I used acrylic paint and when I went to clean it I noticed that the baby wipe sort of activated the actual um, acrylic paint and it started to sort of um, smear so I, I figured well houses are painted with house paint and that doesn't run when it gets wet so I'm going to give it a go with this so fingers crossed it works. <laughs> Um, other products that you will need is a compass with a chalk pencil. Make sure it's a chalk pencil. Um, and obviously the pencil needs to be um, nice and sharp, so you will need a sharpener. Now let's start talking about the colours. Now I've never seen any mandala artist use pigments before, so this is actually um, all trial and error, so I'm not too sure if this is actually going to work. Um, it should work, but we'll give it a go. So the colours that I'm going to be using are, and they're from this little piggy. So we've got Blue Eyes, Indigo Waves, Taffy, Sapphire and Ore. Now, I've mixed the pigments with Aussie Flow Troll and Liquitex Gloss Heavy Gel. Now, the measurements are 5 grams of pigments. 75 mils of Aussie Flow Troll and 15 grams of Liquitex Gloss Heavy Gel. So that's 5 grams of pigment, 15 grams of um, Gloss Heavy Gel and 75 mils of Aussie Flow Troll. I'm, as I said, I'm not too sure if it'll work, but fingers crossed it does. <laughs> Alrighty guys, now that I've told you what products I'm going to be using, let's head over to the other table and then yeah, let's get going. Thanks guys. Alrighty, so what we actually got to do first before we actually um, start anything is actually give the rock a base for the colours to basically sit on. So we're actually going to paint the whole thing black, including the bottom, but we're going to start with the bottom first. To paint that black, once that's dry, then we can turn it over and paint the top. And then once that dries, put the grid on and then start adding some colors. So let's get going. Thanks guys.
Alrighty, so now that that's painted top and bottom, we're just gonna let that sit for a few hours. And then once it comes back, then we can actually put the grid on top, the cross grid, and also the round grid. And then, yeah, then we can get going. Thanks guys. Alrighty, so we're actually back the following day and I've allowed this to dry overnight. So it's completely dry to touch and it's 100% cured. And now what we have to do, we have to put the grid on here. And the idea of the grid is to basically help keep all the dots in line with each other. Um, you can do it without the grid, but it just makes it a lot easier to put the grid on there to basically keep yourself um, neat. But before we put the grid on there, what we need to do, we actually have to just get this little divot out. So basically this divot is actually meant to be there. Um, it's, it's to represent the center, um, but because we're actually going to be putting a ruler over the top of it and drawing on it and then also um, putting a compass on there, um, it's just going to make it a little bit difficult to, to do the actual crosses and also put the, um, the compass on there to sort of spin it. Um, because otherwise the, the point might sort of slip off. So we're actually just going to sort of um, scrape this off. You, or you just need something sort of sharp. And all you're doing is just sort of scraping it off. So now that we've got rid of that little divot, now we can actually go ahead and um, put the grid on there. So we're actually going to start with putting the circles on first. And it doesn't matter how many circles you put on. Um, the more circles uh, or the more um, circles and also crosses that you put on, the easier it is for you to actually keep the the pattern um, neater. So now that we've got the uh, um, the circle grid on there, now we, we get our flexible ruler. And basically, we're going to line up on that center point from what the, the compass made.
Alrighty, so now that we've got our grid there, now we can actually start applying all the colors. Now, I don't really know what design I'm going to go for until I actually start. I'm just going to sort of, sort of let it, let it flow as I go. <laughs> Alrighty, so I think I might start with gold and put gold in the center. Okay, so I'm just doing a quick little voiceover because the very, very first dot that I did, there was like a little air bubble on the side, which then popped when I pressed down on it, which then made the paint sort of um, stick out from the side. So what I'm do doing here is I've got my fine tip um, cotton wool bud and I'm just tidying it up a little bit. Just because it's the first dot and it, and it should be perfect. <laughs> There we go. And now I'm just using the stylus pen to basically just tidy up um, the excess paint and sort of spreading it out nice and evenly. Just making sure I've got that um, bit that stuck out. I think I've got it. You'll be naughty. <laughs> now, I'm using uh, the, the one mil um, dotting pen, but this is where it starts to go a little bit wrong. Again, right off the bat. I should have actually been going one dot in, in each of those little sections. But right there, I started doing two. And I'm like, I didn't realize what I was doing until the next sort of few around. And I'm like, oh no, I think I've ruined it. And what I should have done here, I should have actually wiped these um, dots away and started fresh. But I kept going and I really should have sort of gone with my gut instinct and actually stopped and started again. But I just kept going and which then actually made um, the whole process um, where I actually actually had to fight against um, where I was sort of wanting to put the dots just because I put too many here at the start. So um, it's definitely a big learning curve for myself um, to sort of make sure I follow the grid when I've put a grid there for that particular reason for me to follow. <laughs> um, but you'll notice, um, throughout the video that I actually start to sway away from the actual grid lines and that's because I'm fighting against it. If I did sort of start from scratch, I don't think I would have had that issue, but yeah, lesson learned. And I'll tell you what, I still love the, the actual outcome of what I've got, um, but I think I should have really sort of listened to myself um, at, at the start and sort of scraped these ones off and started fresh. But as I said, lesson learnt, and yeah, I still love what I got, so you. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just doing a quick little voiceover again because at this point I realized that these dots are actually a little bit too small. So I actually just get the next um, size dotting tool up and start going over the top of those dots. And as you can see, the bigger size definitely was the way to go with this particular positioning. You! <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to put some gold dots on and almost straight away, the second dot, I actually missed the line just ever so slightly. So then I was actually trying to sort of position the, the next dot 
according to the um, the distance between them, which then sort of made them all just a little bit off the centre of the line, um, which I really should have actually wiped these off and started from scratch because there is a grid line there for a reason, Nathan. <laughs> you goose. <laughs> So as I'm sort of swooshing these dots out, I'm actually starting to get like a real Roman sort of empire um, medallion vibe happening. And so I thought from this point onwards, I might sort of put some sort of Roman battle music on. What do you reckon? <laughs> well, I guess because I'm actually the one putting the music on, you guys just have to sit back and listen. <laughs> Enjoy, guys.
know what? It reminds me of like a Roman, um, like not a hieroglyphic, but like a, a, a Roman sort of um, medallion or something like that, like that the, the Roman empires would wear on their chest. Oh, this is sick! <laughs> oh, wow! I'm actually really happy with this. Like, for my second attempt at doing dot painting, I'm actually, like, I'm already seeing a lot of improvement from my first one. So, that was my first one. I love I love the first one, but this second one is awesome! Yeah! Oh yes! If this is the improvement that I'm seeing just after my set after like two attempts, I can't wait to see like how how far I can actually progress. I'm so happy with this one, guys! Yeah! So when this dries, and now I actually haven't done it to the um, the first one yet either, but when this one dries, um, I will actually then go over it with a, a baby wipe and get rid of the actual grid lines. And then once I've got rid of the grid lines, then I can actually do a coating of resin and I think it's just gonna bring it all together. Alrighty guys, I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you all so, so, so much for joining me on this episode. I'll tell you what, I love stepping outside the box um, to try new things. Even though this is my second attempt at sort of doing this, it's still a very, very new sort of um, art formation for me. So um, I'm so happy that you guys are on, on this journey with me because I'll tell you what, I'm having so much fun! Yeah! <laughs> And if you guys like what you saw here today, please give us a thumbs up. I'd love heaps of thumbs up for this one because I'm so happy with this one. And if you're not yet subscribed and you feel like subscribing to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Then hit the little dark bell. That'll actually indicate when I upload new videos. And if you think any of your friends or family might like to see how I created this awesome, awesome, awesome piece, you please forward it on to them. I'd love for them to have a look at it as well. All right, guys, one more time. Thank you so, so, so much for joining me on this episode. And this is the fine art of distraction.